ladies and gentlemen, let's right game into the comp video. Let us discuss tiled resources, but for the PlayStation 4, what I hear you cry. Well, technically, it's texture streaming, and it does exist for the PlayStation 4. This is unsurprising, um, but the guys behind Granite SDK have given a little bit of information regarding this, but it already exists as a subset, by the way, of OpenGL 4.4, um, which the PlayStation shader language is a mixture of DX11 and OpenGL, uh, OpenGL 4.4. That's not exactly 100% true. There are some obvious uh, differences, but for the most part, this is very true. I'll go more into that in just a moment. So what is a partially resident texture, also known to its friends and buddies as PRTs? Now, strangely enough, John Carmack actually really pushed these back in the day of Rage. Now, if you've played Rage, particularly on the PC, you'll know the issues with it. Um, it basically swaps in lower resolution textures than maybe what you'd like. Now, their technology was known as Mega Texturing. It was primarily developed simply because of consoles. Um, so what it does is it basically improves the cache and memory bandwidth by basically swapping in um, textures depending on dependent, I'm sorry, on your proximity to a particular object. So, for example, if you're looking at a tree at a long distance, just as you'd expect with basic levels of detail, you don't need a high, um, you don't need a high quality texture there. And as you get closer, it can improve and improve and improve. So we'll go more into that in just a moment. So Sony, uh, this is a quote by the way, Sony has announced the PRTs is available for the PS4. This is aimed at both doing the same thing as tiled resources of DX11.1 and we sometimes use the term as virtual texturing. We call Granite SDK a fine-grained streaming system because we load a small tile um, of texture data. This is happening in the background when you're playing the game. The size of the tile is configurable but would usually be 128 by 128. When using virtual texturing, you will only load textures into memory that is actually viewed by the virtual camera. The main benefit is you will save loads of video memory that you need for textured data, but you can also budge of side benefits to loading times are reduced and disk access is more constant and predictable. The bottom line is you can increase the graphical fidelity of games while staying limited on the current version of hardware. So if you consider, obviously out of quote, now the PlayStation 4 does have a unified memory system. It has humor. That's H-U-M-A. I'm pretty sure most of regular viewers will know what that is. If not, you can just search for it on the channel or the website or whatever you want to do. And it's basically a memory system where virtual memory, uh, so visual memory, or video memory rather, and the rest of the assets are basically stored in exactly the same memory um, space, right? So the CPU can access the same thing as the GPU and so forth. So technically it's not video memory um, or graphics memory allocated for the PS4. Um, there are assets available of course but it's not like okay there's 256 megabytes available for graphics and 256 available for the main memory. This was what happened with the PS3. But virtual texturing still has other uses primarily as they mentioned for loading in um, well assets and also for streaming data from the hard drive. Remember, okay, we've got about five gigabytes of memory available for the PS4. Remember there is about three gigs that is um, reserved for the OS. If you want more information on that, you can either check out the first part of the infamous Second Son analysis where I go heavily into that, or you could also check out the Order 1886 breakdown, which I also go into the memory system of the PS4 there. So, um, the basic premise is that they want to maximize that. And as I've mentioned previously, developers have already stated they're starting to push um, towards the limits. And if you think about it, it makes sense. There's a reason video cards on the PC now have at least two gigabytes of memory and most PCs have at least 8 gigabytes of regular memory. Now when you consider something along the lines of uh, the Order 1886, environmental art there is often 1024 by 1024 and um, at, 
that's actually the start. Sorry, I'm sorry. That's the standard tiling texture. Then 1024 by 1024. Enviro um, environmental art is generally 512 per unit, which is pretty damn big. So you can start seeing how this starts to get quite large and very, very fast, particularly when you're dealing with um, RGB8 plus, you know, when you've got that alpha channel for high resolution textures, it can start gobbling up memory really, really quickly. And this is in addition, when you consider another another little facet of this, how grained something is. So I've mentioned this a lot regarding compute. Basically, granularity with computing basically is an indicator of how small something is, how tiny a object is and this could be for example a task for example with um, if you're doing GPU computing if you're doing fine grained it means that there's a lot of different tasks running in parallel if it's coarse grained then it basically means that there aren't so many tasks going on um, this basically reduces communication overhead but at the same time it leaves you less control so it's going to be very interesting to see how this is implemented on the PS4 I feel that it's going to mostly benefit the fact that for hard drive, from texturing from the hard drive, it's probably going to help. And I also feel that obviously they can probably show more on screen as well. Anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. It's a little bit of food for thought. Anywho, remember that Granite it does support the PC, Mac, Linux, all the other major platforms as well. Of course, the Xbox One. So anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.